I think Raj Bhosle is absent for quite a long time. Raj Bhosle. Raj Jain is always present. Raj Bhosle is absent for quite a long time. And Iraj, anything you have heard of heard from Raj Bhosle? Have you heard from Raj Bhosle? Anybody knows about Raj Bhosle? Yes, Mr. Aditya Savan. Do you know? Why Raj Bhosle is not attending? Musa, no. Okay, so there are other types of CMM thing, you know, coordinate measuring machine. Aditya, this screen is visible, no? CMM. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if the question asks is types of CMM, then you need to draw these uh, simple figures. So, one is what we already discussed, that is this. This is most commonly used. Another is fixed table and deliver coordinate measuring machine. That is, the table is fixed here. And this is moving, this head is moving in this direction. That is called the X. Then the probe moves up and down. In most of the CMM, the probe is moving up and down. That is what is your it is and this is your y y coordinate now in this case moving bridge in moving bridge what happens here the entire bridge this c-shaped bridge is moving across this table entire bridge here now it is fixed here entire bridge is moving so that you get a wide coverage that means you can mount you know the larger component on this kind of machines. So the area which can be covered is more in this moving bridge coordinate machine. Then you have fixed bridge. That is this fixed bridge. So here, this L-shaped bridge is fixed. And this is your X axis this is your y axis and this is your z axis always where the tool is that is your z axis so your tool is nothing but the probe again you have column coordinate measuring machine this is exactly like your milling machine so now in this again this is your x axis this is y axis and this is z axis so all the movements are shown here with the arrows so you need to just draw these sketches and explain anyone. This is now a cantilever or horizontal arm coordinate measuring machine. So here now this, the whole assembly, this I shape or T shape, it moves across this. When it has a cantilever ramp which goes in and out plus this moves up and down so the probe is over here when you have moving table horizontal arm coordinate moving table so again here the table that is this table is moving in this direction that is your x and this is y and this is your z axis And again, gantry coordinate measuring machine. So again, this has a very uh, large, uh, this is used when, whenever the large components has to be measured, like aapka pura, um, car body, uh, vehicle ka car body. So this type of CMMs are suitable for measuring or for checking the car bodies. So you have again, this is your x-axis, this is y-axis, and this is z-axis. Another configuration is L-shaped bridge coordinate machine. That is, why L-shaped? Because this looks like an L-shape on which your probe is mounted, which moves up and down. 
and goes in this direction. So that is your L-shaped bridge coordinate measuring machine. Then fix out of this only four have to explain. Uh, not necessarily all. Then fix table horizontal. You can you can write at the top that these are the various types of you know CMM. And in which you can just explain, you know, three or four, or one in detail. That is also sufficient. So fixed table, the table is fixed. Horizontal arm coordinate measuring machine. So again, here you have this is one axis. This is your z axis, and this is your x axis. This is your y axis. Transverse movement. Then. Moving table cantilever arm coordinate measuring machine. So again, you have here this as x axis, this is y axis. How do you determine x, y, and z? That is, you have to stand in front of machine. Now, this is the front view. Here, the operator is standing here. Operator is standing here. The component is here. So z of z axis is obviously. To which your probe is. This is your Z. This is your Z axis. And when you are standing in front, like here, when you are standing here, so the axis which moves longitudinal, that is X axis. And then perpendicular to that is Y axis. So this is your X axis. This is Y axis. Here, the object is standing here, not here. The object is standing here. So this is your X axis, and this is your Y axis. So this is what we need to describe, hmm? but this is what is most commonly used. So I explain this. Uh, what is CMM? It stands for the coordinate measuring machine. So it is a three-dimensional measuring device, which is uh, not possible. Or it is impossible. Three-dimensional measuring is impossible. Uh, is impossible. CMM came into practice after the invention of CNC, NC machines. Hmm. Hello. Because, yes. Uh, sir, some students are uh, trying to join. Okay. And they have been admitted. We'll continue. So, because of the CNC, three D contouring was very easy to machining. And then, how to measure that uh, contours, like automobile body shapes, yeah, computers, uh, yeah, your uh, TV, picture tube. So all you know, mouse. These shapes or statues. So these shapes were difficult to measure, and these shapes were difficult, were easy to produce with the help of CNC. And in order to measure these deviations from the programmed path, the CMM was invented. So this is variety or volume options for the inspection equipment. Like suppose if the variety of the parts. Is less is if there is no much variation in the parts. You can go your normal, you know, inspection devices. But if there is a variations, uh, part variation is many. That is, today product A, tomorrow product B, product C, product D. Uh, then you have to go for a CMM. Hmm. So this is a graph of uh, variety of parts. And the lot size. 
this indicates what now cmm this indicates that variety of parts is more but the quantity produced is less so that time your cmm has no replacement you have to go for cmm because you are manufacturing only one or two items and those items are also different different items so cmm is the answer this is how the data flows uh, between your CAD CAM system and CMM. Like you have a CAD, then CAD generates uh, the CLSF file that is with the help of the CAM. Hmm. Then in the CAM, computer aided manufacturing, this CAM stands for computer aided manufacturing and it is not computer aided machining. So in this, you have NC processor that is you can generate your decode M4 files. At the same time, you can generate a program which goes for your CMM, that is coordinate measuring machines. And then CMM can do the inspection. CMM can do the inspection. Then any updation can directly go to the CMM. And then CMM can be used in the tool room, in tool management and planning, uh, in updations, etc. etc. Not this tree diagram is not that important. Hmm? But the earlier graph, this graph was important. There are few steps uh, in measurement with CMM, out of which the step which is important is only this calibration of the stylus or the probe. That is, you must know the diameter of the probe how much it is hmm. so depending upon the accuracy you mention the probe diameter that the, usually the probe diameters are uh, as low as 1 mm and as high as 6 mm like suppose if you want to measure a groove and the width of the groove is set to mm then you cannot measure that groove width with the help of a 6 mm dia probe so for that you need to go for very small probe and of course there are limitations because you cannot go less than one mm probe because that one mm probe is nothing but a ball that is a spear optical probe and that ball is mounted on a steel shank or shank means which is holding the, the probe so there is a limitation on the diameter of the shank isn't it because now if the probe is 1 mm, the shank diameter will be around 0 0.8. And if you go lower than 0 0.8, then it will not have any strain. So that's why you have to be um, very careful when you are handling uh, this smaller diameter probe, like 1 dia or 1.5 dia, because they are very delicate and can easily uh, break. So when you are touching the workpiece also, you have to be very, very careful. Hmm? Even if, uh, you know, even if the contact force is little more, it is it will break down. It will break down. So you should be very careful. So whenever you are measuring, say, groove of uh, width the two mm, then you have no choice. But your probe diameter has to be less than two mm. Six mm dia probe has sufficient good strain, and because it can be hold on five dia shank and five dia five dia shank strong so this diameter of the probe you have to give before you start the measurement with the CMM and then the program it is like your tool offsets in your CNC machine and then this program it considers the diameter of the probe and accordingly it gives the inspection results these are the various parameters which you need to define whenever you are checking linearity, uh, then whether the planes are parallel, whether it is cylindric, cylindrical, that is if you want to measure the cylindricity or if you want to measure the sphericity uh, or if you want to measure the angles, then you need to define some parameters. Hmm. So that it was again not important from examination point of view when you are actually working on the CMM that time you need to know these parameters but as I told CMMs generally they are not given 
to the fresh engineers. Normally, actually, the CMMs are not given to the operators. Uh, that is regular IT or even diploma holders. CMMs are op operated and programmed by degree engineers only. That too, not fresh, hmm, with an experience of minimum one two years. Because the probe cost is around one one point five lakhs, hmm, and it is imported. And nobody keeps you know this device optical probe as a spare spare one unless the cost of the machine is very high. The cost of the machine is very high, then they will keep it in spare so that one gets damaged, another can be used. But then, normally, what I have seen that the optical probe that device is not in a spare, huh? so that's why uh, the production managers or called QC managers are a little hesitant to give CMM machine into the hands of the fresh engineers. So, so this we discuss that how to control the CMM uh, can be controlled manually and computer most of the most of the time it is computer assisted there are some softwares available uh, for measurement uh, so ready-made programs are available for calibration of the probe Pro calibration of the probe means calibration means like you are checking the accuracy of your measuring de device, not necessarily that it is probe. You can check the accuracy of your vernier, you can check the accuracy of your micrometer with respect to master gauge, with respect to master gauge. That is what is called the calibrations. Calibrations are done uh, at various accredited labs, like in Bombay, you have IDMI. Which is at Sakinaka. So there you have facilities of calibration. So what happens whenever our measuring devices like vernier micrometer or even the CMM, there are chances or not chances, the devices uh, gets wear out. So after consistent use, you don't get a correct reading. Like if you uh, if you if you check your vernier calipers with the jaws in, that is with the jaws together, you can see a uh, light, you know, passing through the jaws. That means there is a gap developed uh, between the two jaws. So how much is this jaw gap? So that can be, you know, obtained from the institutes or from the labs. And then that distance or that gap you have to consider uh, whenever you are writing the reading. That is suppose if the diameter is 20, but already my jaws are worn out. And from the lab, they are given that you have to adjust this 0.1. That means whatever reading you are going to get will be plus. Then you have to subtract this calibration error. That is 0.1. So the actual size will be 19.9. This is what is called the calibration. That is you are checking your measuring devices with respect to some known devices, one some standard devices which are available in the lab. No. Then there is the Apex Lab, huh? that is NBA, which is NABL, that is National Accredited. So that is at Delhi. So all these, there, like this IDMA, they have their equipments also certified and at national level. And the equipments which are at national level, they are as per the wavelength standards, because these wavelength standards, huh, they doesn't. There is no question of any wear or tear. Huh? So this is what your calibration is. Hmm. So calibration is must. If you are for certification, uh, they will always uh, see that all your measuring devices are and equipments are they calibrated or not. They will go through the certificates. Uh, every device should have a certificate, calibration certificate, and they should be calibrated at regular intervals. And that interval you have to decide and you have to convince the auditor you i am going for a calibration every year or it can be every two year or it can be every three months also so that depends uh, suppose if it is uh, regular regularly used uh, regularly used then to calibrate maybe every three months but if it is not regularly used then you can calibrate say, after one year or maybe after two years 
so that you have to decide and even that frequency of inspection is also uh, given also by iso standard also that is depending upon the uses what should be the frequency of calibration that is also defined so that also can be checked so this is what your probe system is and again there are different you know probes available the switching probe system you have continuous measuring probe system this is what is your probe is so you end by dikta that is what is your probe is this this is probe and this is a shank so imagine if it is 1 mm probe this shank it has to be a little longer also it cannot be less than 0.8 so imagine 0.8 and such a long uh, maybe around 2 inch uh, so l by d ratio is you know 50 divided by 0.8 so more than 50 times so you have to you know handle it like a newborn baby mm. so slight you know touch mm, slight increase in speed uh, will you know damage this probe then there are other you know measuring techniques like um, this uh, proximity sensors then you have non contact laser probes non contact laser probe means this is again a important seen um, uh, uh, industry like say electronic industries or semiconductor industries that is where this diodes diodes or ics which are very small you know components are manufactured they also need to be checked wafers wafers means apna uh, ic wafers hmm. they also need to be checked so since they are very delicate even if you take it in a hand and try to measure in a computer they will bend uh, the geometry will be spoiled so in this case you need to go for non contact or not only delicate but sometimes where the um, very high degree of hygiene is required uh, very high degree of hygiene is required so like in food uh, in foreign countries uh, so non touch or non contact inspection is required in such cases in even in medical fields also it's really food but in medical fields also uh, that uh, you uh, that touch uh, in order to maintain the uh, sterileness uh, or bacteria free you cannot touch so that time we need to go for this uh, non contact laser probe uh, now here what is shown is say your component is kept like this huh? it is at an angle and the probe is vertical so you cannot do measurement so in that case either you have to align this component with reference to probe or you need to align the probe with reference to the work piece so either of these two then only you have to carry the inspection measurement so in this line position you cannot so in, that is what is called as the alignment or truing the component you you true the component huh? you true the component like if you are doing milling huh? milling of of say square surfaces for the four sides so roughly you need to align one one edge and if it is machine all the four side machines then you need to align the two sides before you go for drilling or pocketing or any other operation so same thing here also uh, before you measure uh, you need to align the workpiece or you need to align the probe this is a photograph of uh, cmm this is what is most common to use so you have a setup here you have a computer this is a machine the computer is uh, interfaced with the machine this is a component uh, and this can move in this direction as well as this head can move like this that is x direction operator is standing here this is your z axis travel is So I thought I will share this because uh, this is important from short note point of view. And CMM question on short note on CMM is uh, regularly asked, either in question number one or question number six.
supply chain management actually from the examination point of view it is uh, not uh, mean that important but since it forms uh, it comes under sim i thought i will uh, quickly you know go through it because the frequency of question on supply chain management is not uh, much in cad cam sim why because uh, there is a separate subject in the final year supply chain management in production engineering there is a separate full you know full fledged uh, subject that is 100 marks plus having talk term mock also so we'll just you know quickly you know go through this that is uh, what is supply chain management because uh, all of you know that nowadays you know uh, the liabilities are reduced you know every uh, or every big industries they are trying to reduce their uh, liabilities and everything is outsourced huh? everything is outsourced you just have a table okay and you have lots of uh, supplies uh, or you just have a assembly shop where you do only assembly hmm? and all the components are procured from outside so it is supply chain management is nothing but the management of uh, all the activities and processes uh, which are related to both upstream vendors and downstream customers in the value chain upstream vendors and downstream customers matlab like you have you know you are manufacturing a locks or you are manufacturing cupboards so you have customers means where you are supplying the cupboards or that is in the market or in the shops where finally you are going to sell the locks or cupboards hmm. and vendors means like uh, the raw materials or maybe various different components uh, sheet metals or sub assemblies uh, maybe gearbox in case of car gearbox engines etc uh, which is uh, supplied for assembling your component you have upstream vendors and you have downstream customers like say mahindra they have many you know vendors who supplies the engines for example kirloskar right? no doubt mahindra they have their own engine shop also at higatpuri but they have they take engines from kirloskar also so all this has to be managed properly is it because this scm supply chain management is useful when the product is very complex hmm? when the product is very complex so you need to handle it you know like when you are talking about uh, a car there are 10000 components involved and there can be hundreds of uh, suppliers hmm? so keeping a track of this hmm? without computer without networking is uh, difficult so that's why we say it is technology enabled it is technology enabled so here this was actually a case study it was for the health care you know so that we will not do. so this in this uh, i have not uploaded this uh, i will what i will do i will delete a few slides and then only upload that is whatever is required like this this slide is required this uh, if somebody wants you know you can go through it so if you want i will upload both the presentation that is one uh, which is required for examination point of view and another just for your academic purpose so this is your healthcare this is a case study hmm, for healthcare and it was simulated also using arena simulation softwares arena simulation software is helpful for simulating your supply chain also that is scm so in of course now scm uh, whenever you say scm that means inventory will definitely be considered 
within it. So inventory is nothing but how much to hold, how much to order, and when to order in a simple way. So now this also we are discussed. So a lot of repetitions will be there because these chapters are linked, like you know, MRP, inventory management, supply chain management. We have many things in common. Many things in common. So functions of inventory also, you know, you know how to uh, manage the inventory. That is, <coughs> you have various systems to manage. That is classification system, inventory tracking. Then you get holding or carrying or you have to consider the ordering or setup cost. You need to consider the shortage or stock or cost, etc. So ABC classification system, this graph is important, ABC classification as a short note point of view. That is a very, you know, small quantity, but the majority of the cost so that comes under A. <coughs> then inventory tracking, how, how the inventory can be tracked that is using barcoding or point of use or point of sale that is where the components are to be used you have to keep the inventory there itself <laughs> then RFIT is again a radio frequency identification and detection system this RFID is used in almost all the automobile plants so wherein a chip a chip RFID may kind of a chip is fitted beneath beneath the car and the chip stores all the informations about that car right from the inspection of raw material till the car is rolled out of the factory like uh, all the raw materials which has been supplied by all the suppliers Everything, who has supplied it, when it has supplied, who has assembled this uh, gearbox, who has assembled the differential. So later on, if anything goes wrong, you know, it can be identified, it can be detected. So that is what is your RFID is. Uh, it's a kind of a chip which is fitted uh, in the vehicle. It stores all the data. Another way of tracking is obviously a physical count. That is manually you are counting it manually hmm? you you can forecast also what is the inventory required and there are different methods of forecasting averaging methods trends seasonal and this probably you must have done in your statistics hmm? or if you are not learning statistics then definitely you will learn this in or operation research is a chapter forecasting but i think this chapter was there in statistics so nobody is going to ask you this graphs forecasting again nobody is is going to ask for what are the different forecasting methods that is qualitative methods quantitative methods Thank you.
battery is low. Yep. So these forecasting methods, so you have qualitative methods and quantitative methods. Again, it's a part of a statistics and will be dealt in more detail in operation research for our okay? There are different, it's one chapter only, forecasting methods. Huh? So you need to study the trend cycle, seasonal pattern, how it is in forecast. I'll just flip through the slides, slides huh? because in this semester, this is not important from examination point of view. What you need to know that there is some technique, forecasting technique, which is used for inventory, hmm? determination of the inventory. All this is there. This is important. That is, uh, what is finally the actual demand is, and what is your, what was your forecasted demand was. So this is what is your skill is. How much is the uh, We allow generally plus minus ten percent. That is, you have forecasted uh, hundred. But in actual, the demand was 90 or demand was 110. So plus minus 10 percent at 90 percent confidence level is acceptable. This is again a diaper example. So you have some more inventory models, uh, which is uh, based on fixed period with safety stock, quantity discounts, and price breaks. So this also plays an uh, important role in inventory. As I told that there will be repetition, isn't it? That just in time, MRP, BRP, supply chain management. So everywhere, you know, that inventory will always come. This is what was a uh, two-bin system, which uh, we discussed during inventory. And this everybody follows, even at our house also we follow. Like we never allow that sugar to completely drain off. You uh, another bean, a small container maybe, which will have you know sugar. Which will last for at least for two or three days. So this is what your two two bean system is. Now moment one bean is empty, then it triggers out the signal that there is no inventory now depending upon the lead time uh, the purchase department has to place an order and for that triggering out you have to issue a card 
and that card is nothing but a kanban card hmm? kanban so once the one bin is empty the card is kanban card is issued this is now ours is full full system or just in time so here this is this slide is important here the products or services are not produced until the downstream customer demands it whenever there is a demand from the customer that time only it will be produced like your coffee vending machine this is perfectly an example of your just in time that is wherever you need tea or coffee or any soft drinks that time you go to the vending machine and you make it isn't it and single piece flow means it moves item that is it can be jobs or it can be hospitals may it can be patients products through the steps of the process one at a time without interruptions or waiting single piece flow that is the raw material is entered and then it is not waiting anywhere it comes out with the finished product this normally we don't use this hygiene code so these are the trends huh? information technology trends like you have e business e commerce automation data processing computer and these are the technologies computer integrated manufacturing concurrent engineering concurrent engineering means like all the departments in any like say design department purchase department planning department production department inspection department they are working together they are working together so that they ensure that there is nothing goes wrong like suppose a design department has designed something uh, he will design it taking views from production department so he will ask he will involve production team also so is design or being designed can be manufactured in our shop or not whether it is manufacturable or not that is what is your concurrent engineering so all the teams all everybody working together collaborative means like you have a partner from whom you are taking technology to manufacture at your plant that is what is called the collaborative engineering so you have all these you know techniques like mrp1 mrp2 erp supply chain management business webs huh? so business web is nothing but a networking uh, webs and cad cam then this was a example on mrp product structures uh, that is you have that is you start with a product and then you go on dividing into sub assemblies of the products and then every you have to go back forward hmm? and then you go down Uh, till its child component exactly means you have to consider the example of your examination right you have examination time table and then you start studying in the backward way so same way in mrp also that is when to order and what to order hmm? so you make a tree diagram so dip depending upon the order delivery that is if i want to deliver in the fifth week from now then the various raw materials uh, like this is this is a table okay and then this is a top and these are the legs i want to manufacture so suppose if i want to manufacture i want to deliver this in fifth week and my assembly is going to take one day that means i should have my top and legs in the shop in the fourth week simple then legs per table there are four legs okay now legs 
what is the raw material required? It's some round bar, okay. And there is a turning operation. And there is a heat treatment operation, and there is a grinding operation. So that operation takes suppose one week, isn't it? So legs should be available in the fourth week, and then raw material should be available in third week. So that turning, grinding, heat treatment can be done in one week. Now this raw material, round bar raw material. Suppose if the lead time is one week, then I have to place an order for this. Second week. So second week में आप order किया raw material legs का. So third week में आ गया. Then third week में you will start with the turning, heat treatment, grinding operations. So fourth week में all the operations will be done and you are ready for the assembly. And then fourth week में you will carry the assembly so that in the fifth week you can dispatch it. So this is how you go backward from here. So week one is current and week five it is the week in which you are going to deliver the product. So ERP links everything, enterprise resource planning. It links marketing, operations, engineering, human resources, finance. Then network man management, that is vendor management, that is vendor relations. They are all very important huh? if you want to execute jit then you should have very strong network of vendors you should have very strong vendor relations strong and good vendor relations hmm? yeah then strategic supply chain management so in this vendor relation and in this supply chain uh, when you are not working liabilities that is liabilities of your staff and then management top management role is very important top management support is very important that is in case if something goes wrong like suppose if you don't receive the material and the production is stopped so that time management should be of understanding nature so that's why top management support is important so this is what all about uh, supply chain management again in this semester examination point of view it is uh, not important so you can if you have any doubts you can ask otherwise you can join for other lecture your next lecture thank you